What's happening? It's Sir William, and today I'm going to talk to you about power again. Now, if you guys follow along the channel, you know that one of the biggest challenges I have as I travel full-time overland across the United States in the back of my Toyota 4Runner is trying to power up all of my different devices. Now, I currently run a single battery with a full-time power setup because the most important of my electronic devices is my Iceco VL45 fridge. I've depended on my Iceco VL45 to keep my beer cold and have fresh food on the trail no matter where I go. So that stays plugged into the full-time battery that I have set up. With that said, I still have other electronic devices that I have to power up. My phone, my tablet, my laptop, my mini rock crawler, my camp lights, my camera. You get the idea. There's a ton of different stuff. What I often find myself doing is a kind of dance and figuring out which is more important to charge when, whenever I need to charge those things up. I also rely heavily on multiple different battery packs. I rely on one, this wagon tech that allows me to not only use it as a battery pack, but also jumpstart the truck if I run the battery down too low. And then I also have a bigger anchor battery pack that I can charge up the laptop top on and multiple other devices and this lasts a pretty good long time. That said, I would like to have an all-in-one power solution and there's multiple different ways that I can accomplish this. First, I can do a secondary battery setup. This is a pretty common thing, but it's very complex and it's rather expensive. In order to do that, I would need another battery, which is gonna at least be $100 to $200 for an AGM deep cycle battery or 500 plus for a lithium ion battery. I would then need an inverter, either a 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 watt inverter is the most common, and those go anywhere from 200 on up from there as far as price-wise go. Then in order to charge it, I would need solar panels or I would need a DC to DC charger or both. And you get where I'm going, that's even more equipment that I'd have to have. And that's before we even get into wiring everything up. It gets pretty expensive pretty quickly. Another pretty common solution is these portable power banks. These portable power banks are extremely convenient. You can just carry them around with you, put them in whatever rig you take out, bring them to the tent, bring them to the campfire, whatever you wanna do, you just grab and go. And they're an all-in-one solution. They range anywhere from around 100 watts and go all the way up to like 1500 or 2000 in multiple different capacities. Now you can get into the weeds very quickly on these things about all the different technical parameters and aspects of them, and I'm not gonna do that in this video. Fortunately enough, I have companies reaching out to me all the time trying to get me to test their products on this channel. And right now I am swimming in power banks. Recently, the folks over at Blue Eddy reached out to me and they wanted me to test out their EB55 power bank. Now, Blue Eddy is extremely anxious to get their review back. As part of the contract that I signed with them, I had only a few weeks to do it and I have to get this review out by July 28th. Now, I recently just got back to the truck early July, so I haven't had time to really test out the EB55 the way that I want to. So just know this is not a long-term review and only my initial impressions. I have no idea how this thing's gonna perform in the long term, but I'll keep you guys Guys updated as I do find out. Let's go ahead and get into it. It has four AC outlets, four USB outlets. I can do DC input there or I can do solar input and then also DC output. It has 700 watts and it has 537 watt hours. So this bad boy is dead but luckily we can charge it. It comes with in the box here a looks like a power brick for the wall. That's the AC connector for it. Oh, neat, some solar connectors for a solar panel. And a 12 volt charger, which is unique because I've had other ones in the past did not come with this. So I'm glad that it came with this. Hey, it says it's charging. 170 watts input. 182. One thing to notice is that the reason it's working is because it's only charging at 182 watts, which that can be kind of a drawback. If you were able to charge at a higher wattage, it would charge faster, but it also wouldn't work back here. So this thing was completely dead. Um, I'm interested to see how long it's going to take it to charge it up. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to sit here with the truck running the entire time, but for the short amount of time that it's plugged in, we'll see what it gets us. Charging at 195 watts. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes on charge, and we didn't get nothing. Damn. When you plug the EB55 in via the 12-volt cigarette lighter adapter, it drops the wattage coming into the unit to around 60, which that's to be expected. So it's been on 12-volt charge for two hours. Let's see what we got here. 
20%. Wow. It does charge a little bit faster when the truck is actually running. So while I was on my way to the next campsite, I let it charge completely. Well, after a nice long travel, the battery is fully charged on this Blue Eddy. I'm gonna plug it into the fridge and see how long it lasts. Uh, it started up, it was at like 45 watts. Now it looks like it's gonna run around 33 to 35 watts. But it's maintaining temperature, so it's set to 36 and it's staying at 30, it's at 36, so. So it is seven o'clock p.m. when I plug the uh, ice coat in. So let's see how long it lasts. All right, update on the Blue Eddy. It is at 20% battery life and it is 7.45 in the morning. So it's like 12 hours. All right, the fridge is officially off. It is 3.52 right now. I'm assuming it went off sometime around 3.45, which is roughly 20 to 20 and a half hours that it lasted on the Blue Eddy uh, EV55. So, not saying that's good or bad. Um, I'd like to see one go for at least 24 hours, maybe two days, uh, just in case you were in a spot where you needed it for that long. But it is 115 degrees right here, and it was 100 degrees yesterday, so it is what it is. All right, I literally have everything plugged into this guy that I could plug in. The only thing missing is my party speaker, which I don't have any more room down in the USBs for that, and my phone, which I'm using to record. But other than that, this is everything, including my fan. So I'm going to turn it all on and see what we got. So I'm going to turn on all the USBs. The power port's already on. Go ahead and turn that guy on. And then we'll go ahead and turn that guy on. See what it's drawing. We'll let everything get up to speed. Right now it says that it's 75 was the output, kind of the surge output. And I'm on location, or else it would be, you know, maybe a little better set up. I don't know. I seem to think that this is a pretty good setup. At any rate, that's how I'd be using it. So, yeah, 74 watts, 75 watts, and that's everything. So I'm charging my rock crawler. I've got the action cam charging. I've got my battery bank charging. I've got all three camp lights charging. I got the MacBook charging. I got the iPad charging. Like I said, the only thing that's left is my little party speaker and my phone. Yeah, safe to say I can handle it. So I really like this big display on the Blue Eddy EV55. Uh, the only thing I don't like is kind of what it displays. So it shows you the output 75 watts there and it shows you the input which is zero currently because it's not plugged into solar or into the truck. But if you notice over on the left side it just says that we're at 80% battery and that's it. And you know, for some that may be enough, but I kind of like it to really give me an exact figure there. Also, some of them will typically have some sort of like time remaining, and this one does not. So I wish that they would incorporate time remaining, and I also wish that they would incorporate uh, actual percentage left. Moving down here, as far as the USB ports, I wish that they would give me maybe one more USB-C port. I'd be happy with one more USB-C port, and... Yeah, the four USB-A ports is fine. This has the same uh, little 12 volt outlets here that I don't know what's uh, used in those. I've never had any kind of appliance with those, but you do have two of those with that DC output. And of course the cigarette lighter style. Down here you have four AC outputs. You can see two of them look like they have uh, room for like a ground plug, but the other two are just regular. And uh, I think four is plenty. I almost forgot the flashlight. You know, these companies love putting flashlights on anything and everything they can. And the Blue Eddy EV55, well, it has a flashlight. It's been a few hours, and I was also able to get the uh, party speaker in on the uh, charge-up action. Everything is charged 100%. And the only thing that I didn't include in this was my Dometic fountain. It's already charged. But let's see how we did. So currently still outputting 10 watts and we got 20% left after charging everything up. So safe to say that the Blue Eddy will uh, fit my needs. Now, if I had a solar panel, then I could just set it out here with this nice bright sun and it would charge that thing up while it was charging everything else up and that would be absolutely ideal. So if you do get one of these, make sure that you get the solar panel with it. Final thoughts on the Blue Eddy EB55? 
I like it. 700 watts is going to be plenty enough power to power off anything that you're going to want to bring to camp typically, all the way up to like TVs, projectors, different things of that nature. Now, you're not going to be able to do high output devices or high draw devices such as hair dryers, induction cooktops, Instapots, different things like that. You're probably not going to find too many of these power stations that will do that. The 535 watt hour rated capacity that it has seemed to be good enough. It powered the fridge, as you saw, for about 20, 20 and a half hours at really high temperatures outside and to be honest if the temperatures were lower somewhere around the 70 to 80 degree mark I would expect to see somewhere around 24 hours of performance on that fridge. It was plenty enough to charge up all of my electronic devices which is ultimately what I wanted it for and the 535 watt hour also keeps it a nice compact design that makes it really nice and portable and easy to put in your truck. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested in getting this Blue Eddy EB55, use the links down in the description below. By using those links, I do get paid a small commission that's not charged to you guys, and it helps to continue to make these videos. Till next time, you guys keep hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit, and remember, you can be happy if you've a mind to. Peace, y'all.